study of geography has uh, undergone so many changes through the years. Uh, it used to be that uh, after World War II until about the 70s, even to the mid-80s, it was pretty much the qualitative revolution. What it means is that there is a, uh, a big push or emphasis towards the quantification of all phenomena, social phenomena too. And that's why it's uh, uh, the growth of uh, human geography or humanistic geography came uh, as a result or as a reaction against a rather quantitative slant. So when uh, social geography came in, it wanted to look at uh, how people and uh, different forms of subjectivities are, are included. Uh, it includes uh, health, which has not been overly studied. And uh, in the case of the GLBT uh, case, uh, sexuality. There's been a, a really good research and uh, um, initiatives about sexuality and space. It wasn't until, I don't know, probably late 80s, probably 1990, when Larry Knopp um, came up with this article called G Gay Geography, which caused some controversy. But it was uh, succeeding publications such as uh, the one written by Gil Valentine about mapping desire that really took off a lot about the studies of uh, the relationship between the GLBTQ or queer geographies as it's known and the study of geography. What we're mostly interested in in geography uh, in relation to uh, say sexuality is how the spaces are created how they are uh, marked as particularly conducive for a more GLBTQ life. And it includes a lot of those, uh, it started out as a lot of uh, secret spaces and places. It was uh, considered as transgression. So when you map desire such as you know, sexual desire, you see the places where people do a lot of uh, uh, same-sex relations, or cruising, or all kinds of, uh, of uh, proclivities that we usually associate with GLBTQ. And um, uh, what's also interesting is that through the years with the change or with the push of urbanization and gentrification, there's been a lot of push also about creation of spaces mainly for, for uh, the gay communities. Uh, in the United States, there's the Castro District in San Francisco. There's a huge, uh, it's uh, the West Village in New York City and many other places in Europe. I'm not sure about Asia and Africa, to be very honest, but there's been a lot of uh, uh, studies that have been done about the Kathui in Thailand and the Bakla in the Philippines. So there's been an imbrication of the GLBTQ community with uh, its intersection with space and place in geography. Um, another concern of uh, geography and uh, um, or queer geographies would be about pink tourism, as they call it, it which is the, the places where most people go for vacation, for leisure, and for all other kinds of uh, activities. And uh, it used to be that it's very secret, it's very... Uh, uh, um, probably what you would call almost illegal or transgressive, but have now been pushed by commercialism because of the fact that they earn money, they generate revenues and profits for people who go to these places. And it's a great thing to study geography, not only because of uh, the intersection of sexuality and space, but also because it is a way to correct certain kinds of wrongs that society at the time considered to be uh, transgressive or bad.